Hey, what's up guys? Back again with another video in the Spigot series. This episode, we're going to be learning something new. It's going to be um, what I like to call a command manager. Um, this was shown to me by CoolMac35, and um, there's, some, there's also some other resources online where I saw this from. So I don't know where he got it from, but uh, yeah, so I'm just saying that I did not make this, so don't think that I made it. You know, I, I pretty much took the idea from someone else, and I just want to show you how it works so that you can use it within your plugins. But anyway, um, this is going to be a command manager so that um, what you can do is basically create a command manager class here and this class will be a class that is able to manage a bunch of subcommands and these subcommands will be stuff like this so let's say you have a command like slash prank right and then you have subcommands within that you know main command right so within uh, prank you have maybe uh, freeze right so that's a subcommand and then you have another uh, you could have another command like slash prank explode slash prank um, you know I don't know turn upside down <laughs> that's really weird but anyway so you have different commands um, sub commands inside of one single command right they're all connected basically right there's um, no w easy way to do that within our current system like um, so let's see here um, I have a example here so this is the current system you would do something like this where you have a bunch of if statements where you have to check the arguments you have to check um, you know the arguments themselves like this the length of the arguments it's just really complicated as you can see here um, it takes a lot of uh, conditions and stuff like that to get working correctly and it's not very structured uh, it's not structured very nicely in my opinion so if we implement this command manager type thing right here we can have this command manager class where you add different subcommands and a subcommand itself is just an abstract class here with four different methods we'll be going over and then inside of these uh, different subcommands that we create which extends the subcommand class you can define these subcommands like um, define the, the command themselves like lock, uh, help, uh, manager, and then reload. You have these different subcommands, right? And then you also you have descriptions for them. You have syntax thingies, and then so anyway, uh, if you go back to the command manager class, what this will do is basically whenever you run a command like slash prank, it's going to come here to this class here, and it's going to come to the on command thing here. It, and what it's going to do first is check to see if the person who typed the command is a player, obviously. And if they are, it's going to put them into a player object here so we can work with them. And then if there's no arguments for this command, that means that there is no subcommands. It's just, you know, like slash prank by itself, right? No subcommands. And um, so if that happens, we're just going to say um, we're going to run the help command, which is basically um, a thing that lists all the other com commands so that you can, you know, uh, next time you run the command, you can actually add a subcommand like poop, right? So anyway, if there is um, more than zero arguments, that means that they did specify a subcommand. So what we're going to do is basically loop through all of our subcommands and see if the subcommand that they typed in right here, so prank subcommand, we're going to see if this subcommand is equal to any of the subcommands that we have here. And if they are, then we're going to run that subcommand, right? So this is basically in simple terms, just say manager of command, <laughs> command manager, right? Uh, the, the name says it all, really. But basically, it's able to match your subcommands that you type into a regular command and uh, execute the right one if it exists, okay? So we're going to get into much more detail with this. Don't worry in case you're confused, but this is just another way to manage your commands and subcommands than having to do, you know, this mess right here, you know, making it all in one class and having to do all the different if statements and conditions here which can be really painful and confusing, like especially if you have a huge command structure in your plugin, you know, having a bunch of these is really going to be a pain in the butt. So you want to have maybe a command manager of some sort, and this is going to be one way to do that. So stay tuned. And so yeah, let's get started now. So let's make a new project here. So file new project, and uh, let's make a spigot plugin, obviously. And what I'm going to do is basically make a prank plugin, kind of like, you know, slash prank. That's why I was typing that a second ago. And that's just going to be the example plugin that we're going to use while we demonstrate how to make a command manager. So, just in case you want to know that. And so we're going to call this prank plugin, or actually we'll just call it command manager. Command manager. Um, and then click next, command manager, blah, 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 command manager. Alright, cool. So we'll open that up now and uh, let everything load and stuff. And I'll be right back when it's done loading. So usually whenever I make a command, you just make a new package here. I'm going to call it commands. And then you would make a class inside of that 
called, you know, whatever the name of your command is. So if my cam if my command is slash prank, I would just make a class called prank command, obviously. But instead of that, we're gonna do command manager. We're gonna set that up first. So we're just gonna do implements command execute like we normally do. So that whenever we do slash prank, we it's gonna run through this class and then we can check to see if there's arguments. And if there is arguments, that means that they might be trying to do a subcommand and then we wanna handle that basically. So uh, anyway, so now we just hover over this and we just, we can click this and it's gonna implement this method here. So the on command method, return true. And what I wanna do first is um, see if the person who typed the command is a player. So if sender is instance of player, then what we want to do, import player by the way, what we want to do is make a player object. So player p is equal to player sender, just like that. There we go. So the next thing we're going to do is check to see how many arguments they have. But um, before we do that, let's go ahead and actually set up the subcommand um, uh, abstract class here so that we can define what a subcommand is so that we can make our other subcommands. So yeah, let's do that. So make a Java class and we're gonna call this sub command. And so public abstract class sub command. And inside of here, we're just gonna define some methods, but we're not gonna give them actual definitions. We're just gonna give them the names of the methods and like, you know, what they return and stuff like that. Cause it's just an abstract class, right? You're just providing the definition, not the implementation. So uh, public abstract uh, string get name. There we go. And then, so that's gonna be one of the methods we're gonna do. And this method is basically just gonna make it so that we can provide the name of the actual subcommand. So like if we do slash prank uh, explode, explode would be the name. So you'll see. So public abstract um, string get description. That's another kind of cool one we could use in a second. And this will all fit together, don't worry. Um, public abstract get syntax, or string get syntax. So we return a string get syntax and then public abstract void perform. And if you wanna know more about abstract classes and how classes work, then you can watch my Java series. I cover that well, I think. Uh, player, player, and then uh, string args, okay? So this is just gonna be a method for, um, this is gonna be the method that we use to execute the, execute the code of a subcommand, um, something we're gonna be working with in a second. If it will let me import player, by the way, it's not really letting me. I just gotta move this, there we go. Now that player is imported, we can actually make some subcommands now since we just finished our abstract class subcommand. So inside of commands, we're gonna make another package called subcommands. And the first subcommand that we're gonna make is the freeze command, so Java class. Um, oh, we'll do the explode one first, that's easier, I guess. So explode command, all right. And to make this a subcommand, all we gotta do is extend subcommand and the reason we're extending it is because it's an abstract class and it's already giving you a warning. It's saying class explode command must either be declared abstract or implement abstract method get name. So the reason we have to implement these methods here is because it extends subcommand, meaning we just need to um, provide the implementation for the methods that is extending, right? So just click OK. It's going to add all these for you. And now inside of these uh, methods, you just got to actually, you know, edit them to make sure they return the right stuff. So for example, for our explode command, the actual name of this explode command will just be explode, right? Because like I said, this will be, let's make a comment there. So we'll do slash prank explode. So if explode is our subcommand, the name will be explode. So that's why we put explode right there. And if we do freeze, we would put freeze right here, okay? And if we have anything after that, that would be the arguments, so args. But we'll deal with that in a second, don't worry. But now we just need a description here. So this is gonna be, you know, just a description telling the, um, you know, just labeling what the what the command does, obviously. So we're just gonna say, um, explode a player into smithereens. I don't even know if that makes sense. Smithereens, there we go, smithereens. I don't think that's spelled correctly, if that's even a real word. Oh, it is, cool. So smithereens, and uh, now we'll do the syntax, which is, which is just explaining how to use the command. So slash prank um, freeze, or no, explode. And um, and then we want to have a player player name as the argument. So to use this command, you just do slash prank explode player name, easy peasy. And so it's out of here. This is the most important method right here. This is going to be the actual code for the subcommand. 
So once the command manager identifies what subcommand the user just entered, then it's going to run that command by calling upon the perform method here, which is going to run the code of the command, all right? All right, so the first thing we want to do is think about this. If we're going to be exploding a player, we're going to need to get the player that we're exploding. So this would be from the arguments. So the first thing we need to do is check and see if they provided any arguments, right? So um, we'll do, and by the way, normally this would be an argument also, but since we're doing the subcommand system, this is going to be the argument. But still, this would just be argument one, and this would be argument zero because it's zero base. This isn't, this is the arguments thing. This is argument zero, this is argument one. You should know this by now, this is all basic stuff we learned at the beginning, but just don't forget that. That still didn't change, the same concept. But anyway, so the first thing we want to do is get the actual argument um, but after checking to see if they provided any. So if args.length is greater than um, one, meaning that there's this is the first one, this is the second one. So if it's greater than one, that means that they provide an argument. And then what we want to do is say something like, um, let's think, uh, player target is equal to bucket dot get player and we can provide a string of the player name inside of this method here to get an instance of a player okay pretty cool so all we got to do is just do args and then that would be zero wait right there wait where's it? zero and then one so we just do args one just like that so what that should do is basically grab the player name from the arguments after we you know uh, figure out that there is arguments and then set that or convert that into an actual player object that we can mess around with so now that we have the player object, what we can do is do target dot, and we want to explode the player. So let's think about how we want to do this. Um, we're not actually going to make a TNT explosion or anything like that, a creeper explosion. We're just going to play an explosion sound, and then we're just going to kill the player. That's just the easy way to do it for the simplicity of this episode. Because um, the main focus of this episode is obviously going to be how to make a command manager, not how to make a you know a prank plugin or whatever. So anyway, um, so play sound, and we're just gonna get, we need to provide the location as the first argument here. So we'll just do target dot get location. Now we need the actual sound itself. So we can do sound dot, and now we have all these sounds here we could work with, work with. So we'll just do explode, and we'll just choose this one, entity generic explosion. explosion. And now we need a volume, now we need a pitch, and I think one is the max, I might be wrong, but we'll just use one, and um, there we go. And uh, so now that we played the explosion sound, we want to kill the player. So target dot set health to zero. And that's going to kill the player, obviously. If they have zero health, they die. So let's think about, um, do we want to send the player a message telling them they died? Um, yeah, let's just do that. So target dot send message. You just got exploded, son. And then we'll also send a message to the player who's executing the command and tell them that it works correctly. So player.send message, um, you successfully um, bombed, and then just provide the name of the player. So args, uh, we'll just go like this actually. Target, <laughs> target .get display name, there we go. So that should work. You successfully bombed Billy Bob, you know, and then it'll send Billy Bob a, a message here saying they just got exploded and this should explode them. So so if there is not um, more than one argument, what we want to do is actually handle that. So if args.length is equal to one, meaning that they only provide the subcommand, not the, the argument of the subcommand, like the player name, then we want to tell them to actually provide a name, you know, so they know how to use the command correctly. So we'll just do player dot send message. You did not provide a name. So then on the next line we'll say player message send message. Uh, do it like this. Uh, prank explode name. Or we'll just actually put a name. So Billy Bob one two three. And so that's just going to tell the player how to use the command. So um, yeah, so that should work. And we'll come back to this in a second so I can I can explain it one more time before we use it. But for now, that is finished, so let's go back to the command manager so we can set that up. So the first thing we're doing is we're seeing if the person who's executing the prank command is a player. And the next thing we're going to do is see um, if args.length is greater than zero, meaning that they provided a subcommand, you know, actual arguments. Um, we can, we, what we need to do is check and see if the subcommand matches the subcommands that we have currently. But currently we have no way to get you know our subcommands. How do we do that? 
So we can just make an array list that stores all of our subcommands. That's just an easy way to do that. So let's do that. So we'll do private, so it can only be accessed by this class. Um, array list, so it returns an array list of subcommands. See, subcommand just like that. And if you don't know how array lists work, just uh, watch one of my Java videos on that. Pretty easy peasy. And then we'll call this subcommands. That's an easy name. Is equal to a new array list. Okay, so it's going to make an array list for us of subcommands. And uh, we'll go here and do public command manager. So whenever an object of this class is created, um, basically this is the constructor, so it's going to run this little method here. Okay. So then whenever this constructor is called, um, we're going to basically do subcommands dot add and add each of the subcommands that we have here. We only have one currently, so we'll do add new explode command. You might be wondering, um, this is a constructor, so this is going to be called whenever we create an object of command manager. But when do we create an object of command manager? This would be in the main class. So if we go back to the main class right here. If we go to command manager, this would be right here. We do git command prank set executor new command manager. There we go. So that's going to be where we declare a new object of command manager. And therefore, it's going to run this. And therefore, it's going to add all of our subcommands to the subcommands array list. Therefore, we can make a separate um, what's called method here that returns all of our subcommands for us so that we can then use them inside of here or access them inside of here. So let's make that method real quick. So public um, array list uh, subcommand get subcommands and we're just going to return subcommands just like that. I know we could have just done you know subcommands like directly from here to here. But just to be proper, we're going to make a method, a getter, to access it. All right, so now that we have this here, that means that we're able to check and see if we, they typed the command with more than one argument or more than zero arguments. So if there's zero arguments, the command they would have typed it would have just been this by itself. But if they did provide more than zero arguments, it would be something like prank poop or prank one. We don't know what they typed, but they did type more than one for sure. So what we need to do is check and see what they typed. And depending on what they typed, if it's an actual subcommand that we have, then we're going to execute that subcommand. So the easy way to do that is just to loop through all of our subcommands. int i is equal to zero. i is less than sub get subcommands. So we're calling this method here. Dot uh, wait length right or size? Yeah. So this is going to return the size of this array list here, which holds all of our subcommands. It's just basically just going to loop through however many subcommands we have, and then i plus plus to do that. And basically. Every iteration of this loop, we're going to see if that subcommand is equal to the argument that they typed in right here. So if they typed in poop, we want to see if poop is equal to one of our subcommands, maybe like poop command, right? So anyway, to do that, we'll just have an if statement here. So if um, args, and that would be argument zero, right? The first argument. If args is zero, dot equals ignore case, and now we want to get one of the subcommands. Now we want to get the subcommand, so get subcommands dot get i for the index of the iteration dot get name. So that's going to return the name of our subcommand. So this would be explode in this case. And so what this is going to do, if explode from the subcommand is equal to poop, then we're going to basically run the command. And the way we're going to run the command is to do get subcommands dot get i dot perform, and then just pass in p and then pass in args. And that's how that all fits together. Hopefully that makes sense. So yeah, let's just go through this one more time just to fully get a full um, explanation of this in case you're still a little confused. So if we go back to the main here, we have this thing that we normally use when making commands. So just the register, the registration for the command. So when they type slash prank, this is going to be run. So it's going to go to this class here, command manager. So let's go to command manager. And then whenever the command is typed, it's going to run this method here, the on command method inside the command manager class. And what it's going to do first is see if the person who typed the command is a player. And if they are, then cool. Then we're just going to get instance of that player. And then we want to see if the command that they typed has more than zero arguments. So if they typed um, a subcommand or not. And if they did provide more than one arguments, we want to see if that argument or more than zero arguments, we want to see if that argument is equal to any of our subcommands. And if it does match with any of our subcommands, then we want to execute that subcommand, perform it, as you can see here. So it's going to run the perform method. So let's control Q and then click on this, and it's going to take us to our perform method here. But we want to go to this one right here. 
And so it's going to run all of this code here, which is just going to be the code of the command itself. So hopefully that all fits together. So now let's test it out. That's the only thing left to do. So let's go to here. Oh, we need to, we need to register our command. So let's go back to plugin.yml and do commands, um, prank description, prank on noob. So it's basically the same thing as what we used to do, same process. And now we can run this Maven compilation that's going to set up our plugin for us and I'll see you in the server. All right, so I'm on the server now. Um, I'm just waiting for my other account to join also. But uh, for now, we can do slash PL and we can see that our command manager plugin is on the server along with my other plugin. And um, so we could also just do slash Q and we could do slash prank if we want to. And when we do slash prank by itself, nothing happens because if we go back to our plugin here and go to command manager, we can see that we haven't told it to do anything whenever the plugin um, arguments are equal to zero. So if we were to add something like else if um, args.length is equal to zero, then you could then say, um, oops, come on, man. Then, so then you could say um, p dot send message enter some arguments, you know, something like that. But we'll work with this in a second. So let's go back here now and join with my other account so we can actually test out the command that we made, the subcommand. All right, so let's test it out now. So we'll do slash prank explode. And we're not going to have any, um, we're not going to provide a player. We're going to leave it empty just like that to see if it tells us to add a player. What the fuck? And nothing happened. Um, let's go back here. Uh, no errors, anything. So prank explode did not work. So let's check this out. Oh, I see the issue. So basically we renamed um, two classes the same name. So we have the command manager itself, but our plugin main class is also called command manager, which I did not notice because I'm a uh, mega noob. So let's try, um, just so we don't mess up our projects here and our Maven stuff, I mean, just to be safe, I'm just gonna go ahead, go ahead and rename this one, just, you know, because that'll be easier. So a command manager, um, we'll call it, class you know just add that on the end refactor that and that should fix that for us so then we can go here to this and do command manager class so now this is actually referring to this one rather than the main class itself so now this all of it this should be run which it wasn't being run before so now we can run this and i'll see you in the server all right so i just loaded the new thing onto there so let's just reload now and uh so now we'll do slash prank explode by itself and there we go it says you do not provide a name do it like this slash prank explode billy bob one two three perfect so now let's do slash prank explode rice power 90 like that and boom it says rice power 90 died and then i have to respawn now and um, i don't have my speaker on right now but i'm assuming it played the explosion sound we can just assume that but the point is the sub command actually works so that's good so um, let's add some more functionality. Let's make it so that we have the freeze command also, along with, if they do slash prank, um, let's think here. If they do slash prank by itself, we want it to list all of the commands in their descriptions and their syntaxes. So that's gonna be kind of useful. So you can see why we added the git syntax, git description methods within the subcommand abstract class. So anyway, so let's go back into here and set that up. So what we wanna do, Right, let's just do the freeze command first. That'll be easy, the easiest thing. So freeze command. Okay, and now that's going to extend subcommand. And we can just hover over this to be to do it easier and just click that and then click OK. And now we can just provide all this information. So get name, that's going to be freeze. All right, get description. Freeze up players balls off, you know, nice and classy, right? And then slash prank for the syntax, slash prank freeze uh, player, okay? And so in the perform thing here, what we wanna do, uh, oops, let's, let's just go back to explode and we'll just copy this basically. Go back here, paste it. And we wanna do if, we can just pretty much get rid of this. Um, get rid of this and um, Change this to freeze. And now we could um, freeze the target, right? So now we just need to provide the the code, you know, to freeze the target, obviously. So to do that, we can just do target.set walking speed to zero. So that should allow the player not to be able to move. 
They should be able to jump still, but you know, at least they can't move. It's not really that important. We're just trying to demonstrate how to make a sub command, right? But yeah, that should do the job pretty much. And then we could also send the target a message telling them they have just been frozen. You have just been frozen full. And uh, yeah, that's good enough for now. We don't need to have you know anything crazy. So we got all of this set up here, the implementation for all these four methods. And uh, so let's go back to our command manager class. And what we can do is provide this. So whenever they do not provide any arguments when typing the slash print command, so if they do slash print, uh, slash prank by itself, then what we can do is display a thing telling them um, basically which command, like what all the different commands they can use, all the different subcommands, and then and then all the syntaxes and descriptions for them. So let me show you. So we'll do um, p dot send message. Let's add some divider here. Send another message, and then uh, p dot send message. We'll say. Um, we need to provide the name of the command, so we can just do, um, let's think here, so sub, well first we actually need to loop through all of the subcommands, obviously, right, so we can get all of their names. So for our information is equal to i0, i is less than, get subcommands dot size, and then i++. Plus plus. So basically we're doing the same thing we did right here, down here, just looping through all the subcommands. Alright, so inside of here we're just going to do player dot send message. And uh, we want to do, well, first we want to tell them what command they can do. So we'll do, we just need to get the syntax. So if we go back to freeze command or any of them, we can just see the syntax is going to return how to type the command. So that's going to be important. So let's do get subcommands dot, or yeah, dot get i and then dot get syntax. So it's going to display the syntax to the user, let that a space after that. And then um, we'll add a dash to divide it. And then after that, what we're going to do is get the description of the command. So after it displays the syntax, we'll display the description. So I get i dot get description. So it should also display the description for us. And that's going to do that for all the subcommands that we have, right? And what we forgot to do also is do subcommands dot add new freeze command. So every time you add a command, you just need to add it right there. You don't have to do anything special. So that's basically how you register, I guess you could say. And yeah, so that should fit all together. So basically, again, just to recap, if they do type slash prank it by itself, it's going to do this and display all the different commands and how to use them in their descriptions. And then if you do a subcommand of any sorts, it's going to take that subcommand and see if that's equal to any of the subcommands that we have. And if it is, we're just going to run it, you know, just like before. Okay, so let's run this in the, in the Maven and I'll see you in the server. All right, so I got it up and I'm reloading now. And good. So now let's test out the slash prank thing by itself. So slash prank and perfect. It says slash prank explode player name and then dash explode player into smithereens and then slash prank freeze player freeze a player's balls off. So that's really powerful as you can imagine. So um, basically since the sub command abstract class provides for those different methods, we can easily call upon those methods on any of our sub commands to get information from it at any time. And then this is a really good example of that. We're able to get all of the information from a subcommand so that we can put together a basically a slash help command if you think about it. So hopefully that is pretty cool to you. It's uh, This is way better than what we had before, the old system at least. But anyway, besides that, let's test out the freeze command. So slash prank freeze rise power 90. And then we go to rise power 90. And it says you have just been frozen, fool. Who the hell is, <laughs> who's that? Anyway, so now we can't move. I'm trying, I'm pressing my W key right now. I cannot move, but if I jump, I can obviously jump like I said. But yeah, y'all get the point, it works. That's about it. So um, if you wanna see all the code for this, in case you ever forget how to make a command manager system, I'll leave all of the code for today's episode in the description below so you can bookmark that. And then every time you forget or every time you wanna get a refresher on how to make it, you can come back to that um, code at any time to see how to do it. So yeah, hopefully that'll help you out. And um, yeah, so thanks to CoolMike35 for showing me this. It's a pretty cool system. And if you have anything else you want to see, then join the Discord server. Link in the description for you. And you can join our Discord server and then join the suggestion channel. And you can leave suggestions there on how on what videos to make and, and how to improve. So yeah, just do that. All right, so that's about it. So if you like this video, leave a like if you want to see more. Subscribe and peace.